Hi guys, I have one of my favorite stories that I used to read growing up and it comes from a collection of books called Christopher Church Mouse. And actually, I grew up knowing the author, Barbara Duvall, and my mom knew her as well up in New York. So it's really cool to get to read um, these stories by her. So the story I have for you today is called Whole Sweet Whole. I love a verse that goes with it. Called, it's from Psalm 46, verses 1 and 2. It says, God is our protection and our strength. He always helps in times of trouble. So we will not be afraid even if the earth shakes or the mountains fall into the sea. I've got you now, squeaked Christopher Church Mouse excitedly as he moved his cat game piece ahead of Nandy's. The two little mice were playing a board game called Cat and Mouse. Oh, no, you don't, said the little girl mouse, spinning the arrow. This mouse wins, she exclaimed with triumph in her voice. I can't believe you, Mandy, pouted Christopher. How do you do it? No matter how hard I try, I can't seem to. Just then, there was a huge noise, and the whole church seemed to shake. Look out, Mandy, cried Christopher. One of the walls of his home came crashing down on them. Pictures, lamps, and furniture flew out in the center of the room where two mice had been playing. Help me, Chris, yelled Mandy. She was pinned underneath a bookcase and was covered with splinters of wood and plaster. Christopher's heart was pounding. He made a little tunnel so he could get out from under the wood that was on top of him. His leg was hurting and he had a big scratch on his arm. The little mouse threw the splinters and plaster off himself. The next thing was to find Mandy. He could just see a little bit of her tail sticking out from under the bookcase. I'm coming, Mandy, he yelled. He began digging toward his friend, throwing stuff everywhere. Mama, he called as he tried to free Mandy. Mama Church Mouse came from the kitchen area of their home. She was limping from a cut on her leg. A wall in the kitchen had fallen on her. Son, are you all right? She cried, running toward him. Help me get Mandy out. I'm all right. Christopher and his mother finally uncovered Mandy, who lay very still. Mrs. Church Mouse held Mandy's head on her lap. Are you all right, dear? She asked lovingly. Mandy's eyes fluttered and then opened. What, what happened? Gasped the little girl mouse. Just lie still, dear. The furnace must have exploded. Chris, can you go get some water for Mandy? As Christopher started for the sun, she saw he was dragging his leg. Oh, son, you're limping. You must have hurt your leg, cried Mama. Oh, it's all right, said Chris. He didn't want to worry his mother. Christopher brought a wet towel and a glass of water for Mandy. Mama Church Mouse gave her some sips of water and wiped her face. Just then, Papa Church Mouse came running into what was left of their home. Is Mandy hurt badly? Papa asked, bending over her. I don't think so, said Mama. The wall came down on her and she has a nasty bump on her head, but I think she's coming around. Christopher's mother kept patting Mandy's head with the wet towel. Papa then hurried to Chris. Let me look at that leg, son. After examining it carefully, he shook his head. I'm afraid it's broken, Chris. Stay right here and don't move. Where's our baby, Mama? Asked Papa, looking afraid. Oh, she's fine, answered Mama. She was sleeping in her little nutshell cradle in our bedroom. Nothing touched her and she still sound asleep. That's good, said Papa with a smile. What's going on, dear? Asked Mama. Where were you when this happened? Papa answered, I was over at Grandpa and Grandma's helping put in their storm windows. The minute I heard the noise, I knew what it was. The furnace has exploded. All of the mice's homes in this part of the church basement have been torn up. So Grandma and Grandpa's home wasn't hurt? asked Mama. No, that part of the church wasn't touched, but Snooty and Rudy's home was completely blown apart. Oh no, exclaimed Mama, their beautiful home. She was thinking of the beds with canopies over them that looked like lace roofs and all the other nice things Uncle Rudy and Aunt Snooty owned. 
They were the richest of all the church mice. Suddenly, they could hear little mice crying out in the hall. In the background, they could hear Uncle Rudy calling for his children, said Ned and Ted. I should go help them. Stay right where you are till I return, Papa said. I've sent for Dr. Packrat. He should be here soon. Christopher lay on the rug with tears running down his face. He had never been in such pain before. He was very worried about his cousins, too. Then he thought about Tuffy the cat and his new friend Bully the bulldog. They slept in the furnace room where it was always nice and warm. Maybe they were hurt, too. Papa, could you check on Tuffy and Buffy? Uh, Tuffy and Bully, he asked. Sure will, son. Oh, before Papa could finish speaking, Tuffy walked in, gently carrying Christopher's cousin, said in his mouth. He laid the little mouse in front of Christopher, then took a deep breath and said, Stay here, said. You're safe now. Rudy is safe, and we're still looking for Snooty, your mama. You stay put. Thank you, Tuffy, said Christopher. I just hope they can find Mama and Ted and little Neddy, sobbed said. I was so scared. I'm sure they'll find them, said. At least you're safe, soothed Christopher. Thanks to Tuffy and Bully, you should have seen them dig me out. That cat and dog are real heroes, rescuing our family. They sure are, agreed Papa. He began setting up the living room as a little hospital for the mice that were hurt. Mama Church Mouse and Dr. Packrat helped make all the mice patients as comfortable as possible. Christopher was hurt the most with his broken leg. Mandy was still dizzy from the bump on her head. Everyone felt better when Grandma Church Mouse brought over her best suit. Tuffy and Bully found Sed's brothers and brought them to the hospital to be checked over by Dr. Packrat. All was well. Well, that is until they brought in Aunt Sudie. Christopher's aunt was not in a good mood. Well, it's about time they dug me out, she said. As soon as we can travel, we will find another home. This isn't a good place to live anymore, she whined. Oh, it will be all right, Aunt Snooty, said Christopher. I heard the pastor talking out in the hall. He said the people are putting in a new furnace that will never explode. Yes, Snooty, agreed Mama. Now don't you worry about it anymore. It's time for lunch. Grandma has brought over her wonderful soup and for dessert, there's some of my cheddar cheese pie. Doesn't that sound good? Oh, indeed it does, agreed Uncle Rudy. Let's not go anywhere else to live, Snooty. The very best place to be is with your family. Finally, Aunt Snooty began to calm down, and the next day, men brought the new furnace. People from the church came to rebuild the part of the church that had been torn apart. Mandy's mother, who was helping nurse the patients, brought soup to Aunt Snooty. I think you are being well taken care of here, Snooty, she said as she helped fluff Aunt Snooty's pillows. If I were you, I would stay right here until they rebuild your home. I think that's the plan, said Uncle Rudy, winking at his wife. Tuffy and Bully looked up from the bowls of soup they were eating. Sounds like a wonderful plan to us too, doesn't it, Tuffy? Said Bully in his deep voice. Tuffy smiled, a wise cat smiled, and licked his paws. They were a happy family once again, and the church was a safe place for them all. I just love how that ties back into that verse of God is our protection and our strength. He helps us in times of trouble. And even when we trust in God, does that mean nothing bad is going to happen? No, but it does mean that we get to trust in him through those hard times. And I love the line where I said the most important place to be is with our family. And we have the opportunity now to be with our family every single day. And that's just such a blessing. And to know that God is protecting each of us, even during the time that we're living in, is such an encouragement. So I hope you enjoyed this Christopher Churchmouse story.